All right, so when I take these out of the, the proofing box or sheet tray, however you have them set up, you try to take them out in a round shape. You're trying to maintain the ball. So if a bench scraper helps you do that, that's okay. Um, this one got like a little stuck, so I've got like a weird pointy edge right here. I've done this before. I'm gonna be able to work my way around it. But the more you can take it out into a bald shape, uh, the easier it is to keep it in a round shape. So here we go. I'm gonna just kind of press out my crust a little bit. I'm gonna take the belly, push the belly down, push it out to the sides. And you're gonna see like this has been tempering now for a little bit because the first pizza took 10 minutes and the second pizza took 10 minutes. But I've been doing this for uh, 35 minutes, I guess. So this dough is gonna be a little bit more slack, a little bit more cooperative. So it should shape a lot faster. Uh, I've got, you know, a decent amount of flour on the dough so it's not sticky. We are not trying to maintain any sticky sides like we did when we were balling the dough, um, like you'll see in like the sourdough round or sandwich, sandwich bread or oval videos. Flour is your friend. All right, so I'm getting some length through the edges, through the sides. And this guy feels pretty good, he feels pretty consistent. Very cooperative now. And I'm gonna go for the middle. And remember, where are my knuckles? They are on the, there's a bulldog between my legs. Yeah, you're a bulldog. Uh, we're gonna use our knuckles to kind of pull the dough apart, to stretch it. And this is my ugly side facing up right now. My knuckles are in contact with the smooth side of the dough ball. And this dough is still pretty cool. It's not warm yet, it's cold to the touch. I'm just kind of going in a circle, pulling it apart. Pointy fingers are bad here. You want to really, you know, put your hand in this kind of shape under here. Keep your fingernails pointed down so you're not stabbing the dough. All right, and then take a look at take a look at what it looks like here. Is it big enough? Yep, that will work. And here's another thing to think about. If your dough on the peel is stretched kind of oblong this way, well, you're gonna slide it off that way. And this end is gonna grab on the peel as you pull it out. So it'll stretch back the other way. So you could stretch it and, and you know, intentionally go for kind of a more oblong shape from 12 to six here, knowing that when you go to put it in the oven, it's gonna pull it back into a round shape. So, you know, kind of think ahead. And don't stress if, if you do end up with, you know, hey, get off of the counter, crazy bulldog. Give her pepperoni one time, and then like every time you make pizza, she needs pepperoni. All right, so remember, we're rubbing the flour into the grain of the board because we want it to slide off nice. And I'm going three spoonfuls of sauce. And then, you know, you're, you decide like how big do you want your crust? Because wherever you put sauce, you've got to get cheese just past it. So, you know, take, take your time, decide where you want it to be, but you do want to move kind of quick here. Because if you go real slow and like you walk away from this and you like go do something else and your, your dough is just sitting here on the board, it's going to stick. It's going to, the moisture in the dough and the temperature of the dough is gonna create some condensation that will eventually bleed through that layer of flour we put on the surface. And then your pizza is sticking for sure. So as soon as this guy lands, as soon as your disc is on the peel, sauce toppings in the oven. Don't, don't, don't make it wait longer than it has to. Like this is you know your priority right now. Who am I making pizza for right now? Oh, I was gonna use the peel. That's okay, I've got two more dough balls. This one's for Devin, so Devin only wants pepperoni. Um, I'm not saying like it's a, a, like a race to get it, you know, sauced and toppings, but you know, to stay on task. Don't walk away from it. Okay, so it shakes, it's loose. It's gonna slide off no problem.
That's it. It's in. All right, so we'll take a look at that one when it's done. And then I, if I remember this time, we'll use this guy. Actually, I'll leave it right here. Then I'll remember. All right. Bulldog. Okay, so we had a nice, nice little pepperoni pizza here. A little piece of burnt cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, chopped marjoram. It makes it good. Try it. You might like it. All right. When I go to cut these, I'm always looking for like, where do I want to divide my pepperonis or whatever toppings you might have here? Like, what's going to make sense? You know, what's equal? So half, thirds, plate. So easy. Okay, so here's the last pepperoni pizza that I'm making. This is for my daughter. She's not here, it's gonna cool off. She's gonna get leftover pizza tonight, sorry. Um, but that's a pretty one. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll overlay a picture of that one in here. Um, okay, so get this out of here because we're not using it now. Okay, so I've made one, two, three pizzas, and there's, there's like stuff right here on my, on my peel. That's bad. If there is stuff, like whether it's like a bit of sauce or some kind of moisture or even like a stuck spot of dough, it's got to come off. You got to get rid of it. It's going to make your pizza more likely to stick to it. Um, last year's snowboarding pass, season pass is a good scraper for your peel. Any expired gift card, wash it first. Um, works here. Uh, but we want to make sure that you know, this work surface is going to you know, slide a pizza off of it. So don't be afraid to kind of you know, clean it up and, and you know, scrape it down just so you can get a fresh start. Uh, you know, especially like in the beginning, like if you're somehow getting tomato sauce on here. I don't know how that got on there. Um, but you know, stuff happens. Maybe it was when I, sh I slid it out into the oven. Anyway, I'm trying to remember to use this because I said I would. And we've just got a couple more floured in the box so you can get it out. Get some flour on it. And I'm, I'm, I'm keeping all my dough covered over there. All right, presentation side up for now. I think I'll still remember. All right, uh, so I'm going to go around. This feels way softer, like it's already sitting down on me uh, as it's tempering. So your dough will change as it sits out here if you're going room temperature. If you feel like you want more control, keep it cold. You'll just need to take more time to stretch it. So I have a little bit of a, you know, my crust established. I've kind of pushed out like where the crust is going to be. You know, it's almost like you're setting a pattern for what you want to do here. I'm going to push out the belly. There's something I didn't do. Do you know what it is? You're right. I didn't wipe down my pizza stone. And it's always, yeah, it's not a fun surprise when you got like your pizza on the peel and you're like, oh no, my stone is not clean. So, you know, try to remember to do that. All right, edges first. And now I can feel how much faster I have to work as this dough is not as cold as the dough that I started with as the first few, which is fine. I'm good with that. I'm happy to like blow through these real quick and, and you know, shape them kind of fast. Uh, cold dough. I don't like cold dough. I'd rather have it be more slack and I can just kind of roll through it real quick. Like this one's almost to the size that I want it at. So now I'm pulling from the middle using the knuckles, keeping it supported on the, on the fingers. Fingertips never touch the dough. The smooth side is in contact with my hands. So there we go, like we're, we're there. Like how fast was that one compared to the first one, which was giant or the last two? I know, I forget how many have I done so far. Uh, but there's no flour on my work surface. 
I don't want to put flour in my IPA. And this is like one of those projects where you're going to get flour on your floor. It's, it's just part of the deal. So just kind of go with it. All right. Nice round, good size. Let me get three spoonfuls of sauce here. Same as before. The only difference this time is we're adding a topping. My wife wants mushrooms. So I've got some sliced button mushrooms here. Uh, if you're adding toppings, consider how long we're cooking this pizza for. 10 minutes, right? That's not a lot of time. So if you're cutting mushrooms, let's just for example, and you cut them real thick, they're not gonna really cook, right? And if you're peppers, onions, whatever the thing is, make sure that you cut it thin enough. Example, thin, so that the toppings actually cook in, you know, in the very short time that the pizza's in the oven. Um, also like using toppings that are already cooked, like you know, roasted peppers instead of raw peppers, um, or you know, caramelized onions instead of raw onions, although, I could make a case for raw onions being um, definitely an excellent topping. I wouldn't fight you on that if you wanted to do raw onions. They cook fast if you cut them thin enough, but when you have like onions in particular, like if they're too thick and they don't cook all the way, I think that's kind of unpleasant, but that's me. All right, so you can see I'm kind of moving a little faster because the dough is warmer, it's more slack. It really wants to stick to my peel uh, more than it would earlier on when it was still nice and cold. So, you know, know what you want to do before you start shaping the pizza. Make sure all your mise en place, all your ingredients is in its place and ready. Helps you to be successful. Be able to see where you're going as you're working. And I'm just trying to get like a nice equal distribution of mushrooms. I'm kind of tucking them under some of the pepperonis because I want them to, you know, be heated by the melting cheese. That's it. I'm ready. Here we go. Is it going to release? Yes. Of course it will. I've done this before. All right. So we'll catch up when that's ready. Actually, no. Quick sidebar. Toppings. Cheese. Um, there are certain brands of pepperoni that are just not any good. And I have my preferences. Uh, we like this one in particular. You know, it's, it's a good one. Uh, there are some other organic brands. They all taste different. Yeah, I know, pepperoni's pepperoni. No. So don't be afraid to try a bunch of different brands before, you know, until you find the one that you like. Some of them have dyes. Some of them have a lot more preservatives. Uh, they're all different. And you can certainly go to like a charcuterie shop or a butcher shop and have somebody slice you pepperoni fresh. If that's an option for you, cool, go for it. Uh, mozzarella, I'm just using this mozzarella. It's at Costco, it comes in a two pack. It's good, it's repeatable. But any kind of low moisture mozzarella is gonna be good for you. Um, and then tomato sauce, we've already been over that. I make my own, If whatever you get, a smoother sauce, I'm not saying thin, smooth, not chunky, um, is best for making pizza. All right, we'll catch up when that guy comes out. Look what I found. Oh, I did it again. Okay, I'll make one more. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Here comes the pepperoni and mushroom pizza. So I think you'll probably notice like as we go on, like as I started to like where I finished, um, they get rounder as I go because the dough gets more cooperative. Um, I feel like I have a harder time making like a nice round uh, dough disc pizza um, in the beginning. And I feel like that makes like a really good case for, don't just make what you're gonna eat. Make a lunch pizza, whether it's a giant guy or a little guy. Um, but you know, start with that first pizza to really set the tone of what you're doing. Um, and you know, get familiar with your dough. You know, you know, see if you can make those decisions of, do I wanna let it temper or do I wanna leave it cold? And just because you decided that you wanted to keep it cold doesn't mean you can't take it out later. Like if you, you get through a few pizzas and you're like, man, I'm really fighting with this dough. It's okay, take out your dough. All right, this is a, 
a nice round pizza. It's got a really pretty crust. Really cool air pocket here. These are fun. Um, I like the variation in this crust where this is like a pretty middle of the road, regular kind of crust. And then we've got one with like a giant crispy air pocket. And then, you know, this side's got a little dark spot. We got a little bit of brown cheese on that one. Um, a lot of kind of different slices to eat here. Okay, so I said I'm gonna use the disc. <laughs> I'm gonna do it this time. I am, I'm gonna do it this time. I'm not gonna forget, because this is my last chance. And you know, let's keep it simple. We've done toppings on everything. Maybe on this one, we'll just make a cheese pizza. Yeah, yeah, this one's really soft, so. Maybe a bench scraper would be a good idea when it's this ready to go. Just so I can get it out in a, you know, round shape. All right, this one is gonna go quick. And I'm not using the heel of my hand this time. It's, it's too soft. Push out the belly. And you can also see like as it's tempering, what's happening there's activation happening of, of all this air um you know it's it's you know proofing as it tempers you know it's giving it kind of a it's doing more expansion just like it does during bulk fermentation you know it's proofing it's doubling um you know as this tempers it's getting more active which also puts us at risk of having thin spots you know as bubbles as air pockets develop uh, I'm cool with the ones in the crust. I, I, I really like a little bit of air in the crust. Um, those, those like dark spots that kind of inflate and leave you with like a really crisp sort of hollow spot. I mean, I'm not looking for it on the whole pizza, but I think that's kind of a cool, you know, to get that on a couple slices. Um, that's, that's nice. I find that desirable. So do my wife and my kids. So we're always good with that. We are not cracker crust kind of people. And we also don't really appreciate like I wouldn't want a Neapolitan pizza on a regular basis because it's like all dough. Like there's just hardly any cheese and sauce on it. And I don't think you can make a really nice Neapolitan in like a regular pizza or a regular kitchen oven. I feel like you need more of that heat like in a brick oven or ideally in a you know wood-fired pizza oven. Just so you can get more of that dark, little bit burnt kind of crust on a Neapolitan, more blistered. But if you can execute anything close to what I've done so far in this video, you're winning. You're doing a good job. Don't worry, I'm not gonna forget about the screen. I just wanna see like how big is it in relation to the screen? Do I like my shape? I do, I'm hoping to contract it a little bit so it fits. You could pre-measure, right? So here we go, pick you up. And you gotta, you know, you can't be afraid to handle this though. So how do I do this? Well, I'm gonna start at my 12 o'clock side and I'm gonna try and lay it down on the screen and just bring it in right on top of it. And I might adjust it a little bit because I don't wanna have like a bunch of crust overhanging it. So I'm just kind of picking it up, making sure it's all on my disc. I don't wanna pick it up and go to take it over there. And like I've got dough hanging off of one of the sides. So sauce, three spoonfuls is gonna be right. And you can see this is a different crust, right? Then everything that I've done, if you were paying attention or if you scroll back to those other videos um, or the, the previous uh, pizzas that we just made together, uh, you can really see how I was able to trap more air in this crust just because of the warmth in the dough. It's because of what the dough's doing. It's alive. I mean, you know, it is alive. Okay cheese to the edges that's going to be a cool spot of crust it's going to have a nice big air pocket in it it's probably going to get a little darker i'm good with that i like that and even though like i am directly on the screen i still want to be kind of quick about what i'm doing because the dough is trying to settle through the screen and i don't want that to happen because i don't want it to eventually be completely stuck to the screen right what did I forget to do? You know, this thing. But it's okay because I'm not like shaking it around on a on the peel. So it's going just, I just put it right in the center of the stone. It's gonna cook for 10 minutes. 
uh, I'll pop, I'll, when I bring it out, I'll show you kind of how this comes off of the screen because it, it is a screen and it does have like those little holes in it. So the dough is going to settle into it a little bit. So we will still need the spatula to kind of release it off of there. But I've never had one stick before. So we'll see. Okay, we've got that cheese pizza. And it's on the peel, or not the peel, it's on the, the aluminum. It's on the aluminum? It's on a pizza screen, that's what it's on. And I'm just gonna pop it off here. Let me use my spatula, look at that, magic. It comes right off. Let me get rid of this guy. That's hot, that's hot. Okay, so you can see what I was talking about with the crust. I've got big bubble, big bubble, big bubble, big bubble. A um, lot of air in here. Um, I sort of forgot about it, so I went a little dark with the cheese, uh, but it's okay. The person this is for is going to appreciate a little bit of caramelization on the cheese and light sauce. So I know it almost looks like a white pizza, right? So, you know, you got to sauce it. How the person who's going to eat it is going to like it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Marjoram. And that's it. We're hanging out. This guy is ready to go. And, you know, you can see just how easy was that on the screen. It was stupid easy. Um, there was no shuffling around on the board. Um, I recommend it. Link in the description. So there'll be links for not just the screens, um, the peel, the wooden peel. Oh, what else? I'll throw a link into the pepperoni that we like uh, that's normally available to us. And, you know, Costco mozzarella, link for that also. Uh, just all the useful links. Proofing boxes, everything is in there. So now you're left to practice. Make pizza once a week. It's amazing. It'll frustrate the heck out of you when you first start it. Uh, you might have the experience of like going to like slide a pizza in off the peel and you just fold it over on itself. And you know what? It's going to happen. Just go with it. It's okay. You just got to gotta make those mistakes. Uh, 500 gram batches are good. So you can make four pizzas and uh you know experiment questions in the comments go for it make some pizzas i always say make two nah make like four make five make six leftovers are good and you know if if you have friends who are willing to bear with you and you're learning learning experience of making pizza invite your friends over and make pizzas have some beers make it a social thing